the tea time yesterday, one of the guests was mentioning that he had been visiting some of the monasteries here in the United States and had gone down to Wat Metta. And I asked how many monks were there because when I was there last time I was close to 15. And, and he said, oh, there's 10 now. And, oh, wow, that's, that's shrunk down quite a bit. So I, I asked about some of the monks I knew because I, I think I visited there about three times. And, and so, yeah, one of the senior monks left. And I thought, oh, really? Those are the monks I, I knew quite well. And it's interesting for myself to hear that and think, oh, that's, well, that's too bad or, um, or unexpected. I don't know, it's been in uh, ropes for a while. And we were talking about the Sangha in general and uh, how it works. And I was relating how, how rare it is for, for people in general just in the world to ordain, but then for those to, to stay in the robes for long periods of time. And it can be a given, it can be something that, especially living in a monastery for a while, we talk about just sort of the Groundhog Day effect here, the daily activities going, and it seems like things don't change very much. And we spoke about Lumpur, coming close to almost 50 years in the robes now. Ajahn Kurundamo, Ajahn Siddhanto, 24, 28, something like that. Ajahn Yanako approaching his 20th year, and just the, the rarity of that, and how easy it is just to, to think about that as years go by. And so it's quite a beautiful thing to have monks who've been in the robes a while. And it takes a lot, actually, uh, one of the senior monks was saying, there's a lot of resources it takes for a monk to continue on, and that's why there's not, there tends to be less people who've kind of gotten past that 10-year mark, and then as the years go on, that, that decreases. And it's not an easy life. And so these last three and a half months, we've had Lumpur and Ajahn Kurundamo up to the Pacific Hermitage, and I was talking about how the, the dynamics were changed a little bit with that, and some of the guests asked me how that was, and so, it, you know, Lumpur adds quite a lot of gravitas, and Ajahn Kurudamo with his many years as well, and then you have Ajahn Yanako here as well, then it's like, with all three of those monks, it's almost a hundred years in robes. So that stability that, that Lumpur, Ajahn Kurundamo bring, Ajahn Yanako. It was interesting, however, just with Ajahn Yanako here to see the, the difference. And I thought, oh yeah, it was, it was quite helpful actually for me. I don't know how it was for others to see how, how it was to have uh, Ajahn Yanako managing the monastery on his own, to not have another senior monk really to, who was generally around uh, Ajahn Siddhanta's on retreat. And I was quite just impressed with how Adinyanako has been managing everything and taking on his duties as the abbot and seems to, in just no short time, he's been quite steady and reliable and poured in enormous amounts of effort and managed a lot of decision making. And most of us, I think, don't really know a lot of the decisions he has to make every day and they can be quite weighty as well. So that sense that even without Lumpur and Ajahn Kurundamo here, it was quite a helpful thing. And uh, sometimes I think about the sacrifice Ajahn Yanako has made, not just in being the abbot, but actually what a couple of the, the newer abbots have done is, is ask the senior monk to leave for, for a period of time, not just a year, but in Ajahn Amaro's case, it ended up being 10 years with Lumpur Sumedho although I don't think he planned it to be that long. But that's a, that's a particular sacrifice that Ajahn Yanako is making, is that he's living here and he has, he's encouraged Lumpur to stay here, Ajahn Kurnadama to stay here. And, and I think that would, for me, just speaking for my own, that would be particularly difficult. Uh, not an easy thing to have such a tremendous monk like Lumpur here, but still be the abbot. So I was, I was just thinking about that sacrifice and just the many sacrifices that Ajahn Yanaka was made and, uh, and stayed in robes for this long and, and then at a, 
I guess he's being told now, not such a, a young age, taking on all of these duties. And so the sense I was thinking about is just how precious it is to be in the robes for a long time. And also my later reflections have been about, you know, what am I doing with my own life uh, in the monk's life? And am I still treating it as a, a very precious thing to be doing? And how careful I need to be with that. But also just as an encouragement to the community just to know it does take something to, to stay in the robes for a while. And I think this might sound a bit dark, but it's something to remember that the likelihood that everybody in this room in the next 10 years is going to still be in robes is, is pretty low. I'm saying this as an encouragement to not take it for granted your own life in the robes, uh, but to think about how can I aim towards that, you know, the long-term possibility of my staying and being in the robes 10 years, 15 years, 20, 50 years. And that can really help, that can really be uh, an encouragement in the long term if you reflect on it often and, and try to continue to readjust and, and recalibrate if you ever think you're, you're going in the wrong direction. I'm going to stop that. <laughs>